Hi guys, welcome to Life of Try. So as I film this video, we are just going over into the new year. We're going from 2021 into 2022, obviously. And it's a good time to start thinking about, right, what are we going to do um, this year? What are we going to try and achieve? But also a time around people are thinking about um, New Year's resolutions. You would have known if you follow this channel, I've got a big thing about New Year's resolutions. I'll put a link to the video below that I did last year. Watch it. It's my thoughts on why I don't believe they're the best thing and, it's, and why um, people fail at them. And they can work um, and there's a couple of tips in that video so check it out um, and hopefully it'll help. But yeah, moving forward I wanted to do a video on some changes that you may want to put into your training. And this particular video will look at walking. And I know straight away there's going to be a number of people that are like walking how is that going to benefit my training well what am i going to get from slowing down what i'm doing and things but there's a lot to be said for it and especially for um potentially the older athlete and i'll come on to why in a, in a moment but if you can mix up your training and if you um look into any sort of training theories um and sort of models of training You'll come across things like the twenty and the eighty twenty rule, which you know eighty percent of your training is at a lower intensity, and then the twenty percent is at a higher intensity, and that mixture allows your body to progress. It allows it to um, to rest and recover, um, and you'll just move on. I personally think at a, at a better speed or pace um, within your training and what and what you're hoping to achieve. So anyway, getting into this video. Um, there are a number of reasons to walk. Um, we know straight away, and the two obvious ones are by walking and um, increasing your heart rate from a warm up point of view. Brilliant. You know, it, it, you can, uh, it's a real good way to start increasing your heart rate, whether it be before training um, or before a race. You know, a, a brisk walk, building up the intensity into a slow run into something that's closer to race pace and then getting you ready for whatever session you're about to do and I, I talked about running there but we could also look at that from a swimming point of view and from a cycling point of view you, know, you build up slowly um, the second one and again this is, this is a really obvious one but from a cool down point of view um, if you uh, have just done a, a big session especially on the bike or, or running here um, whether it be a, a hard session or an, a long session, don't be afraid afterwards to use a long walk as your cool down. I, um, one thing that I always do, and people who follow the channel will know this, that I, I have a dog, so I'm a dog walker, and often I will do a run and then I will use um, walking the dog as my sort of cool down afterwards. So I will go for a run, I'll have a brief um, stretch, I will then take the dog straight for a walk and it, it may be a 20 minute walk it may be something longer but it's just cooling down my body a lot um, uh, you know, over a longer period of time rather than traditionally what i used to do was do my hard session bike run swim whatever it may be or even a weight session and then there's no cool down afterwards you just go straight one thing a lot of people will do, and I used to find this when I went to my local running club, I would drive there, so I'd have very little warm-up. I would do the hard session or the, or the run, whatever the, the session um, looked like, and I'd get straight back in my car and come home. And there would be very, very little cool down. So, you know, those are the two obvious ones. Um, the other thing, and this is where the older athlete may benefit from this, is a walk first thing in the morning again i do this from um, taking my dog for a walk but you don't need the excuse of having a dog you can just go for a walk but from a mobilization point of view and where it gets you sort of just working all those muscle groups and the joints first thing in the morning you know, your body has been probably laying down in one position for eight hours you're gonna get stiff you're gonna get sore um and just you know, being active as soon as you possibly can in the morning, it will benefit you. Um, not everyone is a morning person as regards to their training routine. Um, and I'm definitely someone that as, as I'm getting a little bit older, I probably just need to ease into the day a little bit more. So, you know, use walking as a way to mobilize first thing in the morning. 
Um, the second point, then, or the fourth point, sorry, the fourth point is around active recovery. And we all have rest days. And there are many of us out there that do that believe rest days um, aren't, you know, we, some people can't be non-active, if that makes any sense. You know, they have to do something. And if you are that type of person, then try and incorporate a long walk or some form of walking into your rest days. So a rest day doesn't mean that you have to sit still. What it means is that you aren't running, you aren't to a high intensity, you aren't cycling to a high intensity. This giving your body time to recover and walking is the perfect form of active recovery. Um, and it allow your body to sort of flush out anything that's, you know, that shouldn't be there toxin, toxins wise within the muscles, but also um, just allow you to sort of, you know, get the muscles moving. So active recovery, number four. Number five, um, and a lot of people won't have thought of this as being a, a, a good thing to do, but on the odd occasion, there's nothing wrong potentially with substituting a long walk instead of your run. There's a, many rules of thumb out there, but one thing you can do is if you had, a, say for example, an hour's run planned, then double it and go for a walk. I'm not saying do that for every session, and I'm not saying that should be like 80% of you in marathon training or whatever you are training for. But there's nothing wrong with every once in a while, if your body's just feeling a little bit weak and it's feeling a little bit sore, and the session that you've got planned isn't that focused, maybe it's just a moderate run for an hour, incorporate it. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with mixing it up and there's nothing wrong with saying actually yeah, i'm gonna be active today i'm gonna look to do what i need to do from a run point of view but i'm gonna use a walk substitute instead so again just consider that the next point is around the run walk method and the, the run walk method i'm not going to go into too much detail because you can find it plenty of information out there but there's a number of top coaches that will ask their um, athletes or triathletes to look at when the run walk method when it comes to the run leg of a um, triathlon so when within the training you would look to replicate that as well and that is running for a relatively um, race intensive pace for a set amount of time and then walking for a set amount of time as well there's some people out there that would run nine minutes and walk one minute and use that cycle constantly um, it's not something that i personally have done um, a lot of i've done it within training but never within a, a race scenario apart from when i've sort of gone too fast and especially on a on a longer endurance triathlon that I've ended up walking, but that's not through any sort of strategy. That is simply because I'm absolutely knackered. Um, so consider that. It's something to look into if um, maybe your body can't cope with that sort of long distance, constant running, and you just need to break it up. Um, again, especially something for the older athletes to consider. So the final point I will talk about with regards to walking is conditioning for anyone who's looking at going long distance whether that be from a run point of view or potentially um, looking to do other form of exercise something like a, a bike and then looking to do a walk after so what i'm trying to get to that is that um we mentioned it earlier from a cool down point of view that you can go for a run and then you know go for a walk afterwards or whatever your excuse is for you know going on that walk mine was previously um taking a dog for a walk but a lot of people that are training for ultra marathons and the like um will go for a really long or will go for their run in the morning and then factor in a really long walk afterwards and that is to get used to um being on tired legs it's just as simple as that there are other people out there that will do double run days so you run in the morning, run in the afternoon. Obviously, by the time you run in the afternoon, you are tired or you get fatigued qu more quickly during that session. Um, and again, it's just trying to replicate what you may have within um, a race on event scenario, especially at some of these distances that people are doing, you know, anything over 50 miles 
you, you've got to sort of get used to that sort of running on tired legs. So again, something to consider. There we are, guys. Just a couple of points to how you can incorporate walking into your training. Your walking is low intensity. It can be of benefit. So you know, be wise with your training. You know, mix it up, but also listen to your body. And walking is a great way of when your body's telling you it's tired to incorporate some low impact and low level sort of activity into your training without losing um, sort of the gains you've already made. Anyway, if you like what we do on our channel, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, look us up on social media and just get in touch. We're always looking to support beginners, get into triathlon and we would love to hear from you. Anyway, cheers all.